everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another painting tutorial. Yes, it's not a Contrast Plus painting tutorial because everything here is primed in Chaos Black. So it couldn't possibly be Contrast Plus. Instead, what we are doing is we are painting up the contents of Hive Storm, specifically the terrain. We have all of the buildings here. There's two smaller buildings, but they're off to one side. It's the little kind of bits that come with these two bits. Um, so we're going to be painting all of this up. We're going to be doing all of it in one video, and we're going to be doing it really quickly. I've set myself a time limit of less than six hours. Yes, <laughs> to paint all of this terrain, to get it ready to paint and ready to play with Kill Team Hive Storm because it's really cool terrain. I like it. And also to show you guys how it's possible to do this. Say you wake up first thing in the morning and uh, your friend wants to come over and check out the new box and you're like, oh no, I have to paint all of this up in time for that. Well, this video is going to be the one for you. So we're going to be painting up really quickly. We're going to be using very minimal paint. I think I've set a limit of eight as well for that. There's not really not that many that are going to be going on, but this is going to look absolutely fantastic. So a massive thank you goes out to Games Workshop for sending me all of this uh, early as part of the Kill Team Hive Storm box set. So huge thank you to them because I love painting terrain. It's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, well, hopefully this video helps it become one of your favorite things to do. So we're just going to clear a lot of this to one side and we're going to be doing all of these steps across all of these bits of terrain. And if anything specific comes up, we shall of course point it out as and when it comes up. There's not gonna be a lot though, you know? There's gonna be the occasional thing where there's gonna be like, you know, a little bit of kind of difference in terms of some of the colors, but we shall cover all of that as and when we reach it. So this first section, it applies to everything. So we'll be right back in just a sec. So now that we're ready, we're gonna hit go. Off we go. So. The color that we're going to be using first is some Dawnstone. And we're going to be using a large dry brush for this because we're going to be dry brushing this over the top of all of our terrain. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be adding quite a reasonably thick dry brush here. Now, what we want to do is we want to basically catch all of the edges like this. But when it gets really congested like in there, don't worry about just kind of mashing the brush in to make sure that you get all of those details. And when it also comes to like the kind of flat areas, like sort of around here, we just wanna kind of go into a circular motion, like that sort of thing, just to make sure we catch these little panels, like that sort of thing. So this is gonna take probably the longest time because you're looking for a really decent coverage here of Dawnstone over the top of our chaos black spray uh, but once it's all done it's gonna look well it's gonna look pretty dry brushed <laughs> but as mentioned you just want to use a large dry brush here and kind of get into a circular motion if you can't even get the circular motion to work you can use a bit of a stippling deal like that sort of thing just kind of jab it in and then we're just going to actually just refill our brush a little bit with some Dawnstone. Make sure we get a good amount of that off on our tissue paper. And then we're going to go back to it. There we go. And rather than going straight in for the round and round, you just want to kind of move to a second section and start dry brushing it like that, looking to catch edges. And then once you feel like it's at a similar state it was when you started the roundy roundies, you can go back to the roundy roundies, like that. Just like that sort of thing. So we're gonna do this over the top of all the terrain, all of the details as well, we're not avoiding anything. So we're going over the top of the inside, the outside, the floors, all of it. Thank you. 
Once that Dawnstone is all applied on the building, what we're then going to do is we're going to dry brush the whole thing again using some grey here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of just hit the edges. We want to hit all of the edges. So we're just going to kind of stick to uh, kind of up and down. Kind of motion with our dry brush until we get to things like supports and stuff like these windows. We just want to go side to side like that. We're being much more gentle now. With that Gracier dry brush applied, we're then going to take some white scar and we're going to very gently, a little gentler than that, towards the top of the model, add another dry brush. Just like that. We're not going all over here. This is in some ways like our spot highlight.
So here we are after two hours and eight minutes, as you can see. We've done all of the terrain. It's all been dry brushed. So every single piece is at the same stage, as you can see. It all looks absolutely fantastic. And you could 100% just kind of leave it there. You know, you could just play with it exactly like that. It's already got enough atmosphere. It looks fantastic. The uh, rubble, as you can see, also done in the same way. However, we're not going to leave it here. We are going to take it a little bit further. And, well, essentially what we've done is we've kind of slap chopped everything, but we're not going to be fully painting in every single detail because, well, it's terrain. We already, it already looks fantastic and we don't need to do that. So we're going to be using two colors, I think, and we're going to be using them to add just a little bit of extra variation to all of our terrain pieces. So we're just going to pop some of this to one side, like so. Get these two out of the way as well. And we'll get rid of the big one. Leaving us with the one that we've been working on. Here it is. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to first take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to be using this to basically add like our kind of variation slash trim color. This is going to be the thing that really catches the eye. So we're going to be using this to kind of pick out things like uh, kind of, well, sort of trimmy bits that you might find on, for example, like windows and things like that. So this one's a quite stoneworky, so we're not going to do those. But uh, what we will do is, well, actually, this is quite difficult because this one doesn't really have much in the way of cool things to pick out really I mean it's got lots of really cool detail right but um, okay what we will do is back here in fact so we're going to use the blood angels red just like this over the top to pick out the trim of this little section here Like that. There we go. Uh, do you know what? We will do it on the windows here, just to keep things consistent. So. It doesn't have to fully make sense. <laughs> After all. We'll just do it on the frames, though. So, like, this little bit. Here, for example. And again, you don't even really have to kind of work this into all the recesses and things like that. Because we've already got really great shading, basically, from our series of dry brushes. And from the original primer being the black. We're just going to do that like that. Now, one thing we'll also point out, we're going to do a little bit more on that piece. But we can take things like some of our rubble bits, like this box here. And, uh, well, we can just use this to pick out one of the boxes. Leaving the other one as is like that Just 
like that sort of thing. Again, we will do the rest of the box in due, co due course. But we'll just pop that to one side. Uh, and then we can also do it on, you know, stuff like we can take one of these, for example. And we could we'll apply it over the top of this whole bit. Why not? Like that. I feel like we should pick out this section as well. Okay, so a lot of red later, and an amount of time later, this is all the rain. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, you've got all of the little kind of bits of rubble over there. We've just done a little bit of red. Uh, we've done the red on the kind of the trim of things and on the uh, kind of the, the floors of stuff as well, just to give it a real kind of shocking spot color. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. Uh, so what we're gonna do is once again, we're just gonna remove most of this we're going to grab up our second color which is going to be some wild wood give it a good shake and then we're going to take up our piece of terrain which is this guy and we're going to be using the wild wood here now to well add just kind of another color to the whole proceeding so the best place to do this is to apply this wildwood over the top of metallic details, such as pipes and things like that. So apply it over the top of that pipe there. Apply it over this one. Like so. And like that. And then we'll kind of come in here as well. Apply over these ones. that. We'll also apply it over the top of this light. Like that. Apply it in here. Now you don't have to pick out every single... I've just put my finger in that bit. There we go. Now you don't have to pick out every single piece of machinery on the terrain because there is a lot of that but just adding this little bit of extra ness to a wall such as this one just kind of helps break up the grey
just a little bit. And there you go. Then we can just turn it around onto the next bit. We can just kind of continue in that vein. So, for example, in these sort of portholes. Like that. And again, we've got all of this stuff going on. And just like with the red, you don't have to kind of really make sure that you work it into everything because, well, you've got all that lovely shading from the black. that sort of thing so we will continue with this building shortly however when it comes to things like these little bits of rubble for example we can come in here and we can apply wildwood over top of areas like this soil here like that That will break it up nicely. But again, you can pick out electrical components and stuff like that. And so with that all done, as you can see, we've got the wildwood all the way around our model. Like that sort of thing. What we're then going to do, as you can probably guess by the brush that's in my hand, is we're going to do another dry brush. And this is going to be some Screaming Skull. And we're going to use this to dry brush the brown and the red. And then that's it. Six colors in six hours. Well, hopefully this doesn't take too long.
And there we have it, look. Five hours, 23 minutes. Wait. Wait. Five hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> and look, we have a whole table's worth of terrain. All done. So here are those two other little bits as well that we talked about. And here's all of the little scatter terrain, like so. And we have our two big buildings. We have our two medium sized buildings. Loads of terrain. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. It's a really kind of bright and uh, kind of at the same time kind of murky color palette. Um, just having the red and the and the black basically it's kind of like angels of death that animation that they did on Warhammer plus in some ways it's it's a little bit of that kind of vibe that we've got going on here for these pieces of terrain it's really very very simple and it looks very 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 effective um, let me just see if we can get it to actually focus on what I'm showing you there we go um, and like you could expand this you could do more uh, you could like just kind of once you've done that screaming skull dry brush, go in and add some metallics. Go in and add a blue, a yellow, a green, or another red, or more brown, or whatever. And you could add things like streaking grime or whatever. But from this point, you've got this just very nice, efficient way of painting all of your buildings. Like so. And it just looks fantastic. I love it and I hope you love it too I hope you found this vi video very useful so we'll be back in just a moment with the roundup the proper one not quite sure how we're gonna fit all of this on my spinny thing we probably won't but there you have it we'll figure something <laughs> Yes, here we are. At the end of all things, we've finished all of the terrain as already mentioned and we just decided to put this one by one on the turntable and well, I'm really, really pleased with how all of this has come out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I've already mentioned this in the previous clip, but it was a really, really, really fun experiment for me. Just getting a kill team table ready in sub six hours, which was really, really, really fun. And well, I whole, wholeheartedly recommend it because, you know, it's just a good time. It's a good time had by all and it feels very, very productive, you know, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these contrast plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.